Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social and welcome to the new, new, because there is new, pronounced new. Anyway, you get the general idea. This is the all new 125cc equivalent all electric scooter. And we're here today to put the bike through its paces around this lovely countryside and popping into Peterborough, the cosmopolitan capital of the middle. Let me give you a brief rundown of the bike. So it's 125 equivalent, A2 license holders. They claim it is the sportiest, fastest electric scooter in this category. We got three rider modes, uh, an eco, a dynamic and a sport. In dynamic, you go to 50 miles an hour. In the eco, it's to 30 miles an hour. And in sport, it's full 100% electric power. And charging time is around five hours it's a three point socket plug it in two batteries under the seat job done pretty easy we've got cruise control which is quite interesting and pretty unique to this market we've got a full color tft dash we can change that dash three times uh, we basically download the app and via the app on your smartphone you can change the layout and the look and the information is provided on the dash we've also got uh, tire pressure sensors which are a little bit different because they're done from a qr code so you scan the qr code the information will come up on your app that is linked to the bike. Hugely interesting bike, both batteries are underneath the seat, you can remove the batteries and charge those batteries separately. So if you live on second storey flat or you can't get the bike anywhere near a three point socket and you don't want to run a huge extension cable, just take the batteries out, take them into your house, charge them. You're looking at just under five hours for a full charge. Mileage, we're looking at a range of about 60 miles, but obviously that depends on which mode you're in, how big you are and how windy it is, and if you live at the bottom of a hill or not. No ABS, just conventional brakes. Front brake operates the front brake, but the back brake is linked. So when you apply the back brake, it operates the front brake. So just being uh, whizzing around town, kind of does everything you want it to do. So it's all keyless. <laughs> with a bloop. So we're alive. Side stand, it won't obviously go anywhere with a side stand. Flick that up. And we're alive. Because it says ready. A little bit on the dash, we got the date and time, which is wrong, but never mind. How much we got left. Yeah, all pretty simple. And we're in dynamic mode. If I do the indicator, can you hear that? So that just lets us know that the uh, indicators are going. Twist and go. Easy as. So we've done 30 miles today on a mixture of roads. We've done a bit of dual carriageway, a bit of town stuff, and even little country bimble roads like this. To me, electric scooters makes the perfect sense. Electric power, we're not really there yet with sports bikes, but it is a scooter and small capacity bikes where you don't need the range electric power makes perfect sense. The modes make a really, really big difference. Uh, when you're in dynamic, you can feel like a soft cut at 50 miles an hour, flick to sport and it goes again. Indicated 60 to 65 miles an hour. If you put your chin on the TFT clocks, you can push it to 70. This is a nippy scooter. Definitely in the 125 market, probably a little bit quicker than the 125 petrol equivalent. The braking is really strong. To be honest, you don't really need the front brake because the back brake does the front brake. So just leave your right hand alone to do the throttle and just use the back brake which does the front brake. Indicators and switch gears pretty straightforward. With the cruise control, press it once, that sets your speed. You can't accelerate or deaccelerate or turn it off. You just set the cruise control with setting one button. So while I was just having a gent I was just going to show you this on the dash. So this is a kind of a a flow of the speed. It doesn't actually show the miles an hour, but you can see where I've had a steady throttle, then accelerated, then de-accelerated, and then a steady throttle again. It's not too bad, that, is it? I quite like that. Oh, just like we're going this way. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's pretty cool. The downsides of this model, there's two batteries underneath the seat, which you can remove and take into your house or put in your garage to charge, that's great. But the two batteries take up the space that you would normally find for a full face or an open face helmet. There is some storage in there, but it's not enough for a crash helmet. The second little thing, little niggle, but this is more of a personal thing is, the center stand 
the spring is too soft. So when you're riding along, you can hear the centre stand kind of clattering a little bit. Now you can probably hear this on petrol scooters, but obviously the noise of the petrolness, the, the engine, the combustion, downs the noise of the centre stand tapping. And when you're riding, you can hear the centre stand tapping and every now and then it will touch the floor on roundabouts. But that's more of a personal niggle. The major niggle for me is the lack of under seat storage. So let's talk about price, which is obviously a huge cost saving because you're never gonna have to spend any money on fuel. It is slightly more than the petrol equivalent. The base price is 4099. That's because you get 500 pounds from the government, which obviously means the actual price is 4599. But for just over 4,000 pound, that's it. That's all you pay. You don't have to pay for any fuel anymore. Okay, the petrol equivalents aren't gonna be that thirsty and use that much fuel, but for just 90 pounds a month on PCP, after throwing down 250 pounds, it's all yours. Silent electric commuting, I really like it. I think it makes perfect sense. And this is gonna be an attractive alternative in this competitive market that seems to be building and building from week to week.